in this problem, we have a wood block, one kilogram, that's the mass. And it is pressed against the wall. So the wall is over here. And it is being pressed against the wall by this force that is at a 30 degree angle with the horizontal. The magnitude of this force is 12 newtons. And the question is whether this block, which is initially at rest, whether it will move upward, downward, or stay at rest. So we go from pictorial representation to free body diagram. I'm gonna put it over here. We have gravity acting down, straight down. We have these 12 Newton's force, which is called it F. This angle here is 30 degrees. If you are pushing against the wall, the wall is pushing against you. So there's a normal. And you know, in this case, interestingly, the normal is in the horizontal direction because you're pressing against the wall as opposed to against the, the ground. So force normal weight. And then we have friction, static friction. But we don't know in what direction the friction is going to go. We know that friction is going to oppose motion, but we don't know in which direction, um, you know, if at all, uh, the motion is going to be. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do, I guess it's the 13 thing or so. We go from free body diagram to Newton's equations, Newton's second law. So the sum of forces in X, we have minus mg, um, sorry, in X, minus uh, this force, the 12 Newtons, cosine of 30 degrees, let's say cosine theta, plus the normal, and we are pressing against this object, so it is not moving in the in the horizontal direction. So mass times acceleration in x, the acceleration in x is zero, and so the whole thing is zero. Sum of forces in y, we have negative mg. We have positive force sine theta. And we're going to have, I'm just going to put it here as positive, but we don't know the sign of this force. We have um, static friction. And that is equal to mass times acceleration in y. Okay. So uh, we can put numbers to this equation. Uh, negative mg, that's gonna be, so the mass is one kilogram, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, .8, so negative 9.8 .8 Newtons. I'm gonna leave the units out just to make things a little more clear. 
but remember these are all Newtons. And this is 12, sine 30 is one half, so that's gonna be six Newtons, right? So plus six, plus some force that we don't know about over here, that is equal to um, mass times acceleration. Okay, so negative 9.8 plus 6. That's negative 3.8 Newtons. And what this equation allows us to realize is that if we didn't have friction, then the acceleration will be in the negative direction, which makes sense, right? Um, without friction, it will just slide down. Even if you're pushing against the wall, it will just slide down. And so that tells us that this uh, static friction is going to be pointing in the upward direction. Okay, so because otherwise it will move down, static friction is gonna move up. So static friction, maximum static friction is mu static times the normal. And we can get the normal from this equation and normal is going to be not this implies that normal is positive f cosine theta so the force is 12 cosine theta cosine of 30 times 12 so that's 10.4 Newtons. Uh, so I'm gonna put it over here as 10.4 mu S. Okay, so I can put this one over here. Ten point four. Um, mu static. So the other thing that we have to remember about the static friction is that it is variable. This is the maximum that it can provide. But if the force that it has to oppose is less than this, then it's going to be exactly that force. So the um, coefficient of static friction for wood on wood, we saw it in the lecture, uh, but you can also find it online, is gonna be 0 0.5, right? So 10.4 times, um, 0.5, it's gonna be 5.2. But this is kind of a lie, okay? So be aware of that. This 5.2 is the maximum. What the static friction is gonna do is change its value to make this equal to zero. And can it provide 3.8 Newtons of resistance? Yes, it can. The maximum is 5.2. So this is actually going to be 3.8 so that it makes this one exactly equal to zero. Okay, so notice that there, there's a range. 
I think like the mu k or the mu s can be a little different and the results still will be the same. The, the force that is being provided could be a little different and the result will still be that the object is not moving because it is within the possibility of the static friction to stop it. So this is a, an interesting uh, problem. You have to think a little bit beyond the pure, uh, the pure equations. All right, thank you.